It's us. We're back. And I am Bridget. And I'm Mike. And this is Soft Magnetics. Our topics. So today we're going to go over a question we get a lot, which is um, multi-aperture cores or binocular cores, as Mike just told me they're called, versus toroids and the difference. Yeah. So this is a pretty common question we get. And, you know, obviously the main difference is the shape, right? So that's a toroidal core. That's a multi aperture. <laughs> that's a multi aperture core. So, you know, one hole or two holes. You know, the shape being the main difference, a lot of times these can be used for similar applications to one another. So if you were trying to wind something like a transformer or an inductor, that could be done with either of these shapes. Um, is one necessarily better than the other? Maybe. It kind of depends on space constraints. So from a power and inductive standpoint, what you're looking at when you see a multi-aperture core with two holes, you can kind of think about it as a toroid. Um, or two toroids stacked next to each other. So when you look at a multi-aperture core, what you have is, you know, when it's wound around the center here, you have two magnetic path lengths of equal length and about twice the cross-sectional area. So when these are designed, typically you're going to see that the center area between the two cores is roughly double the thickness of these outer walls. Um, same as it would be with toroidal cores. Not quite double, but pretty close. So you're winding up with this sort of a thing going on here. And what you wind up with is the double the cross-sectional area, if you were to think about this like one toroidal core, but the same magnetic path length. So the path that that flux has to trace through the core is going to be the same as you know one of these sides since they're kind of in parallel going around each other. Magnetically, it shouldn't really be all that different from something like this. Uh, this allows for some different winding geometries that are maybe a little bit um, you know better for certain applications than a toroid would be. Uh, from a suppression point of view, you get uh, the ability to do a differential mode two-line core with this. Um, if you were trying to use a toroid or a shield bead for that, you would just have to use two of them. So they're not really all that different in that case. So what works better? Yeah, these are a little more compact in some cases than using two individual toroids. Is it better? Um, not inherently better. It's a little more space efficient, potentially. It's a little bit less flexible with how you want to wind it. So usually if you're going to wind something like that, you're going to be winding around, call it a center post. It's not an E core, but it's kind of a center post in the middle of that core. So your windings are going to have to lay on top of one another. With a toroidal core, you have the option, like a transformer, to be able to wind on each side of the core to keep a clearance between the two. Um, one's not necessarily better than the other, but some applications are more conducive to using a multi-app or binocular core than a, than a toroidal core. Well, speaking of space efficiency, we also have teeny weeny binocular cores. We don't have toroids that small, right? Yes, well, um, not quite this small. Pretty close, though. Um, I don't know if the camera's actually going to focus on this, but we'll give it its best shot. Uh, oh, yeah, you can see it. Yeah, this one's pretty small. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you could make a toroid that small. It gets, you know, smaller the parts are. They get harder to handle and yeah. package and everything with it and see in some cases. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. So it just seems like toroids are more popular, but there's... Yeah, they're, they're a little more flexible, right? So you can use, you don't have to use two toroids. You can use just one toroid for something. You know, with these cores, you can't, in certain ways, they don't really make sense to wind them. Um, you're kind of stuck doing sort of one thing with them. 
but they do work pretty well. They certainly have a lot of applications, broadband transformers, suppression devices, inductors, a whole lot of stuff you can do with them. So just picking your flavor. Yeah. What ferrite fits for you? There's no one size fits all ferrite. No, that's why we're here. Yeah. It'd be cool if we could make one, though. Yeah. Well, one day. <laughs> no, we want jobs. So. Uh, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, comment if you want us to go over anything else. Yeah. Bye. Bye.